In lesson 8.5, you will add and subtract rational expressions. In our first example, we're going to subtract two rational expressions. Rational expressions are just fractions, so to subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. And here we have a common denominator of 2x, so all we have to do is subtract those numerators and put them over our common denominator of 2x. So when I subtract in the numerator, I get negative 4 over 2x. And now I can simplify because I have a factor of 2 top and bottom. And if I cancel that factor of 2 top and bottom, I'm left with negative 2 over x. Okay, in the second problem, here we have two uh, rational expressions or fractions with a common denominator of x minus 4. So all we have to do is add those numerators, 3x plus 6, and put them again over our common denominator of x minus 4. Now you might wonder if this simplifies because that numerator does factor. There's a greatest common factor of 3, and we can factor it out. But even if we do that, we can't cancel any like factors top and bottom. So this is our final result. It does not simplify. Okay, here too, we want to add or subtract these rational expressions. But <clears throat> in the first example, they don't have a common denominator. So we have to find a common denominator by factoring these denominators. The first denominator is already a product, so it doesn't factor further. But our second denominator is a binomial with the greatest common factor of 3x squared. So I'll factor that out, leaving 2x plus 1. And I'll distribute to check 3x squared times 2x is 6x cubed, and 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. So those are the correct factors. Now, to decide on a least common denominator, I will look at the first denominator, and I need all of those factors. I need 3x cubed in my least common denominator. Now, when I look at the second denominator, I already have a factor of 3, so I don't have to put another 3 in. I have two factors of x, so I don't have to put another x in. But I need a factor of 2x plus 1, so I'll put that in my least common denominator. Okay, so this will be my least common denominator. Now in this first fraction, in order to get that least common denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by a form of 1 so that I don't change the value of this rational expression. But I'll need 2x plus 1 in the denominator. Okay, in the second fraction, I have a denominator of 3x squared times the quantity 2x plus 1. So all I need to create that common denominator is a factor of x. So I'll multiply by this form of 1, x over x. Okay, so <clears throat> multiplying in this first um, uh, product, I get 4 times 2x, which is 8x. And I get 4 times 1, which is 4. I'll distribute there. And in the denominator, I have that 3x cubed times the quantity 2x plus 1. Okay, now in the second product, I have x times x in the numerator. That's x squared. And in the denominator, I have 3x cubed now times the quantity 2x plus 1, that common denominator. Okay, now I'm ready to add the numerators and put them over that common denominator. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 4 in the numerator over that common denominator of 3x cubed times the quantity 2x plus 1. Now I might check to see if this um, simplifies by factoring that trinomial in the numerator. But there are not factors of 4 that will add to give me 8. So I know that that trinomial in the numerator doesn't factor further. And this is my final uh, result. It doesn't, it doesn't simplify further. Okay, in the second problem, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to factor this first denominator 
into a binomial times a binomial. x times x is x squared. Factors of 9 that add to give me 6 are 3 and 3, make them both positive. So I have 3x plus 3x, that's 6x in the middle, and 3 times 3 is 9. So those are the correct factors of that den denominator. The second denominator is the difference of two perfect squares. So, so that's going to factor into the sum and difference of the square roots of those two terms. Square root of x squared is x, and x times x is x squared. Square root of 9 is 3, and negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Negative 3x plus positive 3x is 0. So I have no middle term, no x term in the middle. Okay, those are the correct factors. So now I can decide on a least common denominator. It's going to have a fac two factors of x plus 3, because when I look at that first denominator, I need everything, that, all the factors that are in it. So I need two factors of x plus 3. When I look at the second denominator, there is an x plus 3, but I already have an x plus 3 in my least common denominator, so I don't have to put another one in. But I need an x minus 3. So I'll put that into my least common denominator. So now I need to create that least common denominator in both of these fractions, or rational expressions. So I'll multiply this first fraction, or rational expression, by a form of 1 to get that common denominator. And that form of 1 will be x minus 3 over itself. Okay, now this second <coughs> rational expression, I need an x plus 3 top and bottom. So I'll multiply by this form of 1, x plus 3 over itself. Okay, now in the first product, distributing in the numerator, I have x squared minus 3x plus 1x, that's minus 2x in the middle, and positive 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So I get that trinomial over my common denominator of x plus 3, the quantity squared, times x minus 3. Okay, in the second product, I have x plus 3 in the numerator, and in the denominator, I have my common denominator of x plus 3, the quantity squared, times x minus 3. Okay, now I can subtract those numerators and put them over my common denominator. So I have x squared, and I have minus 2x minus x, that's a total of negative 3x. I have minus 3 minus 3, that's a total of negative 6, all over my common denominator of x plus 3, the quantity squared, times x minus 3. And now does that numerator factor? Are there factors of 6 that have a difference of 3? Well, 6 and 1 don't have a difference of 3, and 3 and 2 don't have a difference of 3. So that numerator doesn't factor further. This is my final result can't be simplified further. Here we're going to simplify a, a complex fraction, which, me, which means we have fractions in fractions. We have fractions in the numerator and fractions in the denominator. So using method 1, where we're going to simplify the numerator and denominator by writing each a, as a single fraction, we'll use that first, that method first. And I have one fraction in the numerator. But I need to create one fraction in the denominator. So I need a common denominator, and that least common denominator is going to have to have a factor of x minus 1 in it and a factor of x. So this first fraction in the denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by a form of 1, x over x, in order to get my common denominator. And the second fraction in the denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by x minus 1 over itself, that form of 1, to get my common denominator. Okay, so now in the bottom, I've got 4x over x times x minus 1. 
and I have 1 times x minus 1, or just x minus 1, over x times x minus 1. And now adding those numerators in the denominator, I have 4x plus 1x, that's 5x minus 1 over a common denominator, x times x minus 1. Okay, but now we don't divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal instead. So now I'm going to invert the denominator and multiply it to the numerator. Once I've created one fraction top and bottom, I'm ready to divide. And we want to invert that denominator and multiply it to the numerator. So when I multiply, remember I want to cancel any like factors top and bottom. I can cancel that factor of x minus 1 top and bottom. And then multiplying across, I get 2x over 5x minus 1. And that's my final result. Simplified form. Okay, in problem 2, we'll use method 2 where we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by the least common denominator of every fraction in the numerator and denominator. So that least common denominator, if I look at all of the denominators in this complex fraction, I need an x minus 4 in the bottom. I have an x minus 4, but I don't have to repeat it. And I need an x plus 1, so I'll put that in my least common denominator. Okay, now I'm going to use that least common denominator and I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this complex fraction by that least common denominator by this form of 1. Okay, but that's really that binomial times a binomial over 1, top and bottom. And when I multiply across now, I'm going to be able to cancel x minus 4 top and bottom so that I'm left with 3 times the quantity x plus 1 on the top. And on the bottom, I can cancel x minus 4. I'm going to distribute and I'll be able to cancel x minus 4, that denominator. So I'm left with 1 times x plus 1, which is x plus 1, plus, and then when I distribute, I'm going to be able to cancel the x plus 1 top and bottom, so I'm left with 3 times x minus 4. Okay, now in the numerator, I have 3 times x plus 1, and in the denominator, I have 3x plus 1x. If I distribute, I'm going to have, well, I'll distribute first here. So I have x plus 1 plus 3x minus 12. And then in the numerator, I still have that 3 times the quantity x plus 1. We don't want to distribute here because if we can cancel like factors top and bottom, we want everything in factored form. In the denominator, I have 1x plus 3x, that's 4x. And I have 1 plus negative 12, that's negative 11. And because that denominator doesn't factor further, there's no greatest common factor, and nothing cancels top and bottom, this is my final result. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 13 odd, on pages 582, 584, and 585 of your textbook.